Reading with your kids. Konnichiwa. Welcome. So great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville. We're literally right across the street from Fowl Meadow, this beautiful wildlife sanctuary right in the city of Boston. It is, it is Boston's hidden jewel. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. Speaking of wonderful, we have a wonderful guest for you today. She is the author of a beautiful book called My Breath Loves Me. Her name is Claire Hallinan. You know, one of the great things about living here in Reedville is that we feel very, very connected to nature. Being literally across the street from a wildlife sanctuary means we have lots and lots of wildlife in our backyard. Hawks and rabbits and deer and turkey. And it's just, it's just a magical place to live. And we're really, really happy that today's episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is sponsored by The Nature Club. The Nature Club is a series of nature-based books for middle grade readers by author and wildlife biologist Rachel Mazur. The Nature Club is made up of a diverse group of five friends. Each book in the series tells the story of one of the kids and how they approach a challenge of growing up, including moving, parents divorcing, and health issues. Their stories run in parallel with stories about wildlife and the challenges wildlife face, including migration, metamorphosis, and foraging for seasonal foods. We're right on the migration path for this flock of birds. I don't know what kind of birds, but, but twice a year, there's like a bazillion birds in our backyard. It's cr- and for like two hours, you can't hear yourself because the birds are singing and they're just, tr- and it's just, Literally millions of voices. It's just, it's just wonderful. And the Nature Club is a wonderful series too. Now, one of the things I love about the Nature Club is that each book ends with the kids finding ways to take simple actions to help themselves and the wildlife they love. Readers learn about the natural history of birds, monarch butterflies, bears, raccoons, frogs, and bobcats. We don't have any bobcats here in Boston. That's probably a good thing. At the end of every book, there are discussion questions and a section on additional information about the featured animal. For more information, you can find The Nature Club on Facebook or Instagram at The Nature Club Books. Or you can go on the internet at natureclubbooks.com. That's The Nature Club, a series of nature-based books by author and wildlife biologist Rachel Mazur. We are also very, very proud and happy to let you know that this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by the books of Nita Clark and Kathy Darty. Nita Clark and Kathy Darty, mother and daughter team. Nita is in her 80s, and we love when she's on the show because she brings such wisdom to the show. It really is wonderful. On her last visit, or it's an upcoming visit, I'm not sure, but anyway, she talks about that, that bad times happen. But good times are created, and and the good times are the glue that keep families together. And a lot of good times can be created when we sit down and when we read to our kids. Nita Clark and Kathy Darry, they've created four beautiful books. Uh, You want to check them out. They're Why Do Dandelions Grow? I Hate Numbers, uh, their middle grade book, The Royal Search for Shenanigans, and their latest book, which is called There Are No Fireflies in Montana. And I was thinking about this book last night. I went out and there were actually there. I saw fireflies last night in our backyard. And I thought about uh, there are no fireflies in Montana and, and how the hero of that story, a little girl, starts talking to her mom and, and asking all the members of her family why there are no mo- fireflies in their new home of Montana. And some of the ideas are really fantastic. You know, I want you to check out all of Kathy and Nita's books. So why don't you go to their website, a neat read publishing.biz. And all of Nita and, and Kathy's books are available on Amazon. So remember the titles. It's Nita Clark and Kathy Doherty. And the titles are Why Do Dandelions Grow? I Hate Numbers. There Are No Fireflies in Montana, and their middle grade book, The Royal Search for Shenanigans. 
And we also want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by a Reading With Your Kids certified great read, Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Clackwitz. We had such a great time speaking with Allison Paul Clackwitz on the show. You know, every kid knows that mommies are the greatest, and Allison Paul Clackwitz is a great mommy. She wrote this book inspired by the adventures she had with her son. She knows, and we discover in the book, that mommies, they feed us, they take care of us, they love us with all of their hearts. But they're also really, really cool. Well, one little boy knows that his mommy is so cool because she drives a big red monster truck, and it is awesome. It bounces and smashes and takes him on amazing adventures all over the country. In her truck, they can do anything and go anywhere. And best of all, they do it together. You can go on an adventure with Alice and Paul Clockworks and Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck, a Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Joining us right now from Washington State, she is the author of a, what I think is a really important book. The name of the book is My Breath Loves Me. Please welcome to the show, Claire Hallinan. Claire, how are you? I am super excited, Jed. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to have you on. I'm really excited to, to talk to you about My Breath Loves Me. Tell us about the book, please. Okay. This book is about um, the this – is, this is actually in, interesting because I – this book as a tool book for children mm -hmm. because I am a school teacher and a classroom teacher for many years and see students not knowing what important things they have. That is actually the breath mm -hmm. living in their own body. And just because they don't know what they are, what they do for them and how to use them and when to use them, they struggle daily behavior choices. And once I started learning about mindfulness, I realized, you know, somebody needs to teach this tool. So I decided to make a tool book for the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's really wonderful that there are so, so many more opportunities these days for kids to learn more about mindfulness and to start understanding how breathing and, and different breathing techniques can help them focus, can help them be more attentive. Uh, and, and what a beautiful thing it is if, if we can help our kids become more mindful and more focused through simple exercise and breathing techniques instead of having to use and rely on really, really powerful and somewhat dangerous psychoactive drugs. Absolutely. And, you know, breathing is not just breathing for the students. You know, if you give some tips like holding hands and grab really tight to breathe in and release. And, for instance, in the book, I'm talking about breathe into bloom, breathe out to open and things like that. If you apply breathing into their physical um, sensation, um, physical connection to the breathing, it's coming really um, easy to access and easy to remember what to do, especially when their emotion is really strong, super angry or super frustrated. You know, kids are just jumping right in and blurt out or, you know, throwing the um, mean words and stuff like that. But just stop and just grab your, you know, just make a fist and squeeze really tight and breathe in and breathe, release it. Those are the, um, you know, the tips they can use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us about how the book is is kind of structured. Is is it a story or is it like like uh, uh, you know some of the magic books that that I see with kids? Well, this is how you do this trick and this is how you do that trick. So this book is um, structured by four main scenes um, you might be able to see in the day, daily classroom mm -hmm. um, lives. So first one being mad, second one being sad, third one uh, feeling jealous, 
And those are the really huge emotion that easily students um, blurt out or being, you know, negative or sarcastic or the, you know, the behaviors other people don't appreciate. Mm -hmm. But um, these three um, uh, scenes by using the breathing techniques, they can be making the better choices. And the last scene is talking about the kindness and when you feel, when you do something kind, you feel, um, oh, kind of warm. Mm -hmm. And kids forget how good feeling when they're kind. So I wanted to emphasize, this is a great thing. You are feeling really great. Reinforcing to tell themselves and pat your shoulder on what a great job I did. Mm -hmm. And I want to, you know, keep doing it. You know, it's, uh, you, you hit on a lot of things and, and I want to go back and talk about them, but, but, but this whole idea of kindness and, and how being kind actually makes you feel good. I remember having a conversation with a teacher and, and, and talking to kids about that. You know, it's, yes, it's good to be kind, but it's really, it's great for you when you're kind to somebody else and when you share something, it makes you feel good inside. And the teacher kind of came, grabbed me afterwards and said, oh, you really shouldn't tell the kids that. They should just be kind for the sake of kindness. And I'm like, okay, but it's still a good thing. I mean, the kids really do. It makes you feel good. And uh, I want kids to be kind for whatever reason. <laughs> you know, if they're just doing it so that they feel good, well, that's not a terrible thing. It's, you know, it's getting more kindness out in the world. Uh, but you also talked about emotions and mm -hmm. especially those three big emotions. I, I think that this, this is, a, this, your book would be a wonderful way to, to start, for families to start talking about emotions because there are so many kids who, who feel these emotions, but they don't understand them. I, my, my son was, when he was much younger, uh, every kind of, negative emotion or every emotion that didn't make him feel good got turned into anger. And he didn't kind of understand that, oh, I'm disappointed. Um, oh, I, f I feel lonely. It, it all that those those feelings just went in and it just came out to him as anger. And, I, I, and, and so I think it's it, one of the things that was really helpful for us was to help him like kind of sort that out and identify that well, you know, sadness feels like this, and loneliness feels like this, and you don't have to turn them into anger. Absolutely. And one thing I learned through mindfulness practice and the study, um, emotions are with you when you're born, but it's not fully developed without any teaching or learning or experiments. And kids kind of know by experiencing and being guided by the caregivers. However, they really do not know the super deep concept about being angry, mad. And so we are encouraged to teach emotions to the students. And when they understand the emotions, oh, so, you know, emotions shouldn't translate your behavior because you are the person mm -hmm. who's responsible for your emotion, right? So um, every day I teach emotion along with this, but you know, there is no perfect classroom. That's why I made this book. So I was able to put um, examples. Mm -hmm. What kind of situation makes you feel this way or that way. You know, it's not exact, but, you know, it, it might guide you mm -hmm. which situation you can use um, the techniques um, along with the emotions that are created by certain situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's so very important. Do, do you experience any any pushback from, from parents who... Uh, you know, might come to you and go, hey, you're here to teach reading and writing and arithmetic. Oh, we, you don't need to talk to my kids about emotions. That's my job. That's true. 
But you know, recently we have you know social emotional learning.、Mm-hmm. It's a huge thing in schools, and you know at the same time, you know when I started mindfulness practicing,、um, the social emotional learning came. It was a really great timing. I could reinforce my teaching social emotional into my、uh, curriculum teaching as well. So you know that. I remember you were interviewing the author about I can handle it,、uh-huh. um, and I thought that was a great thing. But、um, before you can repeat I can handle it, they, the students or children, need to calm down first、mm. because anger doesn't translate got the good message you have to do. And I really want. My students and that all the children want and love themselves、mm-hmm. and being able to do do, do themselves.、Mm-hmm. That's why、um, breathing, learning breathing techniques very important, so they can find find their foundation where they can think、mm-hmm. appropriately、mm-hmm. using logical、um, choices. So important. You, you, I, I, I love that you mentioned it's real important for kids to love themselves.、Uh, just yesterday, I, I had a wonderful performance、um, for a group of kids, and summertime is really、uh, a fun time to perform. It's very different. Typically, I'm in schools, and you know, schools have teachers who are experienced, and you know, some are young, but some some are older. But they're they're all adults, and they've gone through college and whatnot. Summertime, you have your young kids, and typically they're being counseled by high school kids,、um, who are still kind of kids in their own way. And and one of the things I've, I've mentioned on the show, I, I, I hand out these bees, and I ask kids what they're thankful for. And typically, it's、uh, and it's really wonderful because typically it's、um, my 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 family, my my mom, my friends. And yes, this beautiful little girl who is maybe five years old, she stood up and she said, "I am thankful for my life,"、mm. and and it was beautiful. But the thing that was but made it yes, it special yesterday was, I heard all the high school kids, just kind of go, oh, oh, <laughs> it, you know, and it was like. Yes, this is you know, and then I kind of turned it into a lesson. Yes, your life is special and precious, and dudes, your lives are special and precious too. So it is really important for us to help our kids realize how wonderful their lives are and how special and precious their lives are. I totally agree with that, and the reason why I mean,、um, writing. I mean, this is my third book、mm-hmm. because. I really didn't like myself when I was younger, and I didn't, I didn't dislike myself, but I really didn't, didn't like.、Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I really didn't feel like I like it.、Mm-hmm. I like myself in my life. So I started writing. My first book was my memoir, but after I wrote my memoir and then、um, throw myself out. Okay, so, so what next? And I was like, okay, you know, I had a Kind of miser. It's not super miserable, but you know, I just, I just wished I liked myself.、Mm-hmm. So I wanted to give the message to the children、mm-hmm. in this life, and I felt like I have a responsibility just because I have an experience. And I found the tool、um, to share, and you know, the possibility to be peaceful. And kindness in you, and that you can feel it, you can love it, and you can be happy and peaceful.、Mm-hmm. So that's why、um, this book came out, and I am so happy to hear you are mentioning about it's important for children to love themselves. Oh, I, 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 it is is so important, and I think it's、uh, I think there are more kids out there than than we realize that. Have trouble loving themselves, and and that don't love themselves, and that they don't realize how special and precious they are. Right, and also some students or some children complain about how they are unhappy and just being complain mode. But just face it, you know, you are responsible for yourself. 
and you have a tool to motivate yourself and you can you have a tool to be happy why don't you use that mm -hmm. and you know we can do whatever we can do but at the end of the day we want to raise children who are responsible when they're finished schooling or going out there so we have you know as an educators um we have a huge responsibility to teach that tool and how to use it mm -hmm. You know, for, I don't know why this memory came back to me, but it did, just did as you were speaking. Uh, I, there was a colleague that I worked when I was, be, before I, uh, learned how to make a living as, as a magician, I was working in human services and, and one of my colleagues was a wonderful woman, but she was basically miserable all the time. And oh. I, I remember, I remember having a conversation with her. And, and talking about that, and she said, "No, this is just my personality. I'm, I'm just miserable, and I don't want to change. This is what I'm comfortable with." And I, it, it, that blew my mind. I'm like, I don't know why you would <laughs> choose to be miserable, but uh, but it is true. There there's so many things that we can do in terms of teaching our kids uh, different techniques, so that they are can truly find happiness, emotional happiness. So many, so many kids kind of grow up and they become adults thinking, oh, the, the way that I become happy is by getting lots of money or by getting a car or by getting this person to like me or getting that person to like me or being popular. When meantime, you know, we understand that, you know, being happy, truly happy is, you know, it happens when we live gratefully. It happens when we are in control of our emotions and when we are able to find, create healthy relationships with others. So I'm really happy that you've created this, this kind of toolkit for families to, to help start conversations with, with families and, and more than just conversations to help families start doing these exercises together so that kids can kind of start to learn how wonderful and precious they are yeah so i am thinking about i actually uh, met a librarian mm -hmm. um in the coffee shop this morning and we're talking about um uh reading night you know bringing the book and read and teach children um how to breathe and how they feel after they breathing and, you know, the breath lives in us. And, you know, there's no doubt it, it doesn't take money and it doesn't take time. And just a one pause makes you feel so much different mm -hmm. in a really calm situation. And I, I really appreciate that. And I really want every single person should know life is only once. Mm -hmm. Why? You live happy mm -hmm. and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Now, is there um, just, you know, I, I think the more we, we, we share about a book, the more interested people are. Is there a technique that you can share with us right now that, that we can teach our kids to just, like, begin the day on a positive note, a, a breathing exercise that we can do first thing in the morning that can help us kind of uh, – uh, go out into the world with with a real positive frame of mind? Um, you can do actually however you want, but um, the one of the exercises I might do is make a fist mm -hmm. and then breathe it in and breathe out and release. And breathe out through the mouth and breathe in through the nose and make a fist and breathe in and breathe out and release your hands. And that's a really simple thing that we can teach our kids and empower them. Exactly. And every morning um, before school, um, school starts, everything starts. I um, exercise the mindfulness with my students. So the simple exercise like that, and sometimes we stand and 
open the arms and put the arms out and down and little things like that you know just a one or two minutes mm -hmm. and right after recess if the teacher does um these little things you know that's very important they can they can calm down and they can focus and eventually we can translate the conversation to the situation like i wrote in the book and the first example was uh, somebody's cutting in line it happens every single day and people saying like don't cut don't cut but instead of saying that just a pause, make a pause when somebody cut in and breathe in breathe out that takes three seconds mm -hmm. and say guess what i was here before you and that person is saying oh i'm sorry mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you know you don't really have to make a you know mad face or mean voice just calm yourself and just you know communicate what you want yeah and people are so i mean friends are friends and you know if the relationship goes well they understand and if it doesn't work that's a you know problem solving situation that's absolutely okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a great technique for us to remember as we're driving and someone cuts off, cuts in front of us <laughs> while we're driving. Instead of screaming, just kind of hold the wheel and squeeze the steering wheel yeah. a little bit as we breathe in. Yeah. And then release it. And I can drive safely and not hurt myself. Exactly. That is too. It's not a happening all the time in adult's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So... Yeah, so this book, I, um, you know, the reading level wise, it's, you know, pre K to K or something like that, but I purposely, um, ranged from, um, really young age to 12 years old, elementary school age, mm -hmm. just because the message is very, very important. It's not reading level, but concept level can be really, um, deep. And the older students, can think about other instances um, that raise, um, you know, what kind of emotion is um, growing in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So um, I think um, everybody in that um, grade level enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know folks are going to want to know more about My Breath Loves Me and more about Cl Claire Hallinan. Where can folks connect with you online? Um, I have a website. Um, uh, Claire E. Hallinan, um, dot wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. And I also have a Facebook so you can connect with me and I have Instagram and I have Pinterest. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, that's enough. That's the, there's some great ways to connect with our guests. We've been speaking to Claire Hallinan. She's the author of My Breath Loves Me. Claire, thank you so much for being part of our show today. You are very welcome. I enjoyed a lot, Jed. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Larissa Honsick. She is the author of The Opposite Book, a great new book from our friends at Familius Publishing. And I also believe that we're going to hear from uh, from Larissa's daughter, Matilda. It's a really, really cute segment. You don't want to miss it. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Our guest, Claire Hallinan. Please be sure to check out My Breath Loves Me. We also want to thank Rachel Mazur. Check out her Nature Club books, a great series for middle grade readers. We also want to thank Nita Clark and Kathy Doherty. Check out their books. There are no fireflies in Montana. Why do dandelions grow? I hate numbers in the royal search for shenanigans. And, of course, we want to thank our friend, Allison Paul Clackwitz. Be sure to check out her Reading With The Kids certified great read, Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck. I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan. Thank you so much, Fatima, for all you do for the show. Be sure to check out Fatima's blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me. And I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. 
or on Spotify, on iTunes, or wherever you find your podcast. And most of all, I want to thank you so much for helping your child understand that they are loved. And you do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.